Hello everyone, it is Liam, the Deaf Doom Metalhead, and I haven't done a video in what seems like absolutely ages. Got Covid, busy, and just didn't feel like doing the whole sitting in front of a camera and trying to make myself sound intelligent, because I just didn't have the energy, and the whole family's had Covid, and it's been a bit shit, but I feel really inspired to do a video today. I've got a wicked stack of CDs to show. I've got loads of cool little ideas for new videos I'm going to do over the next couple of weeks, but I kind of wanted to break myself back into the whole YouTube thing with a basic collection update, but this is a mixture of like black metal, death metal, some grindcore in there for a change, and yeah, it's just fucking awesome. So we'll kick off with the first band, but before I do that, actually I'm going to do a YouTube shout out because I've been one of these in ages, go check out, I think it's pronounced Mordant Red, he's a new YouTuber and his videos are totally different to anything else other people have been doing. The editing is amazing. The dude's an animal and he's an old school blackened death metaler. You know, he, he grew up on the hardcore, he's into his proper death metal, he loves his black metal and his his videos are really charismatic, really interesting. And they're not just like me like showing a CD, that kind of thing. He proper goes into detail and is passionate about his music and yeah, just go check it out. I'll leave a link below and a little box thing that'll pop up my head. Just go and give him a sub, and if you do, obviously let him know that I sent you his way. So the first album is by a band that is totally new to me. I I think I found this through Spotify, and then I just bought the album because it was really, really good. This came out in 2021. It formed in 2018. This is a international band from the Netherlands and Malta, and that is the band Pilgrimage with the album Signal of the Pilgrim Sun. Now what bugs me more about this CD is that's the wrong way around. Any collector out there will know when you put a CD on the rack and they're the wrong way around and you have to put it in like that. It pisses me off no end. But it, it's not the band's fault probably. But this was put out through Sleazy, Sleazy Rider Records and is a doom death band. Really heavy, really slow, really melodic and it's kind of in the vein of like December Noir, that kind of vein, a little bit, and it's just slow chugging and heavy. I mean, there's two, or a former member of Victims of Creation, I think, which is another Malta Doom Death band or something along that line, that are in this band, and then the other two are, I forget what they're called, like Thy Weeping or something like that, like an old band from back in the day. But it's just really, really solid. So if you like really slow, really heavy, my Dying Bride-esque kind of doom death with the really good guttural vocals, it's just well worth picking up. I mean, it's a band I never heard of and it's released. I only found out through Spotify because it was recommended to me. And now and again I do that and I'll check them out and most of the time they're absolute shit or they're dead wrong and it's something I would never like. But that was dead right. So yeah, Pilgrimage, really, really like that one. Next one is an Aussie death metal band by the name of Puncher Wound. This is their album and it's a long title. Complete Carnage of Congelating Cathonis Corpses. Probably butchered that. This was put out through CDN Records, which I believe is a Canadian label, uh, way back in 2019, I believe it is. No, 2020, sorry. So it's their debut from 2020 and they were formed in 2016. And this is very razor sharp, very precise very heavy death metal so it's got that kind of choppy kind of deer side like riffing uh, the drumming is fantastic vocals are really guttural really low end but then the solos and the lead work is very much in the borderline of kind of death sound of perseverance they're very very technical solos and it gives you a whole different vibe when you listen to them on this album because it's very deer side in the way it comes across the riffing the way the songs are structured the kind of cut and paste kind of riffs that kind of you could say they get boring after a while, but because of the lead work, it breaks up the whole song and it makes it really enjoyable for me. I mean, there's about 12 tracks on here and I think there's a edit on one of them and a demo track, but it's just, I've listened to this quite a bit. I mean, this is a good driving album. It's just fucking heavy and the album cover's really good. But like I said, the lead work really makes this album stand out and I really love it. So go check these Aussies out. It's really, really killer. Now, I might get some slack for this one, I don't really know, because I don't know nothing about this band really. I just kind of liked the album cover, saw someone else talk about it, and the controversy behind it, and I thought, I have to have that, and then I found it really cheap. So this is the debut album from Grand Belial's Key, called Mocking the Philanthropist. Now, this is one of the earliest black metal bands around, I believe. 
or one of the early ones. These guys formed in 92 in Virginia. This is their debut from 1997. Now what caught my eye is obviously the biblical artwork, but the corpse paint drawn on. And I thought it was really funny, and then when you look through the discography, all the album covers are like that. Now these guys have disbanded, but have since reformed, and they've put out an album this year that I've yet to check out. But I checked out this one first, because, you know, start from the start. And what you're getting is like really lo-fi, for the time, considering it's 97, very, very riffy black metal. The, the vocals are buried in the mix. And the weird thing is when I bought this album, this is what made me kind of feel shady about it. I had a note on a piece of paper from the seller saying, if you want to check out my other stuff that I can't advertise legally, let me know. And I was like, I felt like I bought cocaine. Like, you know, it, it, was, it felt dodgy. And then I listened to it, I was like, I don't understand why it's, this band is so hated on. Because when you Google it, it's kind of like, oh, it could be the anti-religious stance. There's anti-Semiticism in there and all sorts of things. But I, I don't hear it on this album anyway. I've read through the lyrics and I'm none the wiser still. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not a supporter of Nazis or anything like that. I've been to Auschwitz and it's pretty shit. Uh, very shit. But like, this kind of music to me is just very hooky, very riffy back metal. And I kind of think maybe the, the sense of humour in this band has been lost on quite a few people. Because especially in this day and age, you can't see anything offensive anymore. Like you see comedians getting slapped on the face on stage or shot for just being funny. You know, it's just a joke. And there's a little reading in here that says, uh, uh, as well as before of other tampon wearing cowards wrongfully accusing the band of being political when in fact it never was, is or will be. This premenstrual symptom induced delirium never before seen is the same one that is currently turning any remnants of the once extreme underground into a transgender bazaar where everyone's feelings are hurt. And I can kind of agree with that because like, you see some people get offended literally over anything. And it's just like, what the fuck's your problem with you? And it's just a joke or, you know, who cares? And, you know, I'm very much a believer of that. You know, I will never say anything bad about anyone if I don't understand. You know, I don't care what you do. But this is just music. And, you know, what I can hear, they're not trying to promote bloody Hitler to come out of his grave and come after you. Not on this album, anyway. I don't know about any of the other albums. But, yeah, if you've never checked this album, it's fucking long. It's got a lot of songs on it, but it is very, very catchy. So, well worth checking out. Not an artsy. Right, next one is a Turkish band who formed in 95 but didn't put out their second full length, which is this one, until 2019. So they've been going a long while without any music. Uh, I think they put some like early stuff out in the 90s and then completely stopped. So Turkish band is called Forgotten, and you may forget about it afterwards. Uh, and this is the album of Past and Passion. Now I believe they actually put, this is another band that put an album out this year that I've yet to check out. I only, when I do my notes I only find out this bit like when I'm doing the notes. But this band, I think there's only one original member left now who's still carrying the torch for these guys. And I think it's him there, the short little bloke there. But this is some Doom Death, but it's very much more chilled out and mellow Doom Death. It's not like in your fence, you're very intense, very angry, very nasty. This is more musically driven, very riffy, again in that kind of December Noir vein, My Dying Bride in the riffs to a point. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, it's not doomy heavy, it's more like sorrowful heavy, where like the, the riffs are kind of drawing out depressing emotions. You know, they're not just going for the bar chord riffs and just slamming you to death with those kind of things. It's more like the melodies and, you know, how it makes you feel, where it kind of gets that doomy vibe to it. And it's not very long, it's, what, five tracks and there's two instrumentals on here. This was put out, again, through Sleazy Rider Records. Uh, back in 2019 but yeah you can check again this is another one I found on Spotify it must be a sleazy rider records thing noticing it now but I really like this I really really enjoy it it's very much a chilled out album for me I can put it on feel miserable and you know and afterwards you know it's great so yeah forgotten with of past and passion now next one is an old-school American death metal band that formed in 1989 uh, out of Wisconsin in the US and they called it a day in 94 I think they put out two albums which I have the first one which was reissued for Hammer Heart and I think they put out another one in 92 and then they just stopped and then fast forward to 2022 and this band is still going strong but only the vocalist is the original member and that is the band Viroaggression with Third Stage of Decay 
Now this was put out through a label I've never heard of or can actually read on here. I think it says Murderer Records, but it's spelled M-U-R-D-H-E-R. And then there's a few other labels involved. You can see on the back there. But this is very, very, very good. Um, Bioaggression caught my attention because the vocalist has a kind of uh, John Tardy approach to his vocals. Even though they kind of came out at the same time, which is weird, because you think he might be ripping off a bit tree, but he obviously isn't, because when you listen to their debut album, he sounds exactly the same. Like his voice hasn't changed even now. And it's kind of weird how it, you can make those comparisons, even though they're not even in the same state at all. You know, Wisconsin and I think a bit you're in Florida, aren't they? But this is amazing. This is what is this? The uh, third full length, yeah. And Brian Deneff is the only original member who is the vocalist, and it's like sci-fi esque kind of death metal, very progressive. It's not your know, meat and potatoes kind of riffs, and you know, just throwing some growly vocals and some blast beats and hope you're happy. It's totally not that. It's just more. It's got loads of atmosphere to it. It really builds this horrible light. If you were like locked on a spaceship and the aliens coming after you down those tunnels, it's got that vibe to it. And I really, really like this album. I've listened to this about six times to really sink in. Because the first time I listened to it, I was just like, it's all right. It wasn't as easy as the first. Because the debut is very much an old school 90s death metal album. And that's, you know, straight away I'm in. You know, I know what I'm getting. This is way more progressive, way more you have to think about it and you have to listen to it to appreciate it and after like the third listen it really clicks and then certain songs start to jump out more and more and more and like the little sound bites in there and you know the artwork it doesn't really give you anything to kind of tell you what it's going to sound like whereas the debut the cover was very much you know bright orange with zombies on it it's going to be death metal whereas this you know it's a bit more intense but it's fucking awesome so if you haven't checked out please stream it and have a listen because it is very very good don't know how easy it is to pick up i got this from amazon pretty quickly so yeah right next one is the iffy one of this pile for me i tried it and i'm still trying it and i'm not so sure if i like it yet so this is the new one from worm rock put out through earache this year this is called hiss now the cover i love the cover the cover really lured me in i love all that kind of anime and like I love martial art films and that kind of thing and this is a band that are from Singapore by memory? Yeah, they formed in 2007, this is their fourth full length, they're a two piece and I think the last three albums have been through their eight records and it's good, I love the artwork, I mean, like, even inside it gets even better, you know, like kind of exploding blood out of throats kind of thing and all that, I love all that. And it's very blasty and I love grindcore just for the drums normally. I just sit here at my desk with some pencils and fucking blasting away and pretending I can play drums. And I do that when I listen to this album. It's very much a pretending to blast beat album. Riff wise I wasn't that keen, they don't really go anywhere. It's all the fun drumming was fantastic on this. Vocals, there's some gang vocals in there, kind of break it up a little bit. And you know, it was alright. But again, I'm on my like fourth listen of this and it still hasn't really sunk in, but this cost a fiver. It was an absolute steal. I have to thank Mark G of the C for pointing it out to me because I just bought it without even listening to it. Because it's like five quid for a 2022 album. Even shit, who cares, you know? And I really like the artwork and it was on my want list. And, you know, in, in time I, I might get into it more and I might check out their older stuff to see, you know, if it's the same or different. But for now, it's, I'm in the, on the shelf on it, you know? It's good. I love the blasts. But like I had it on at work this morning in here, and the wife walked past thinking I was listening to Beastie Boys for some reason, so fuck knows where she got that idea from. Right, next one's also a blind buy, that was dirt cheap, and I couldn't resist. On my want list, and it was one of those days where you kind of just, you're on the internet and it kind of all works for you, and you kind of find something you want at a ridiculous price, and this is one of them. So this is the band called Ara, and this is their fourth full length album? Yes. So this band formed in 2018, and this is another 2022 release. This is their fourth album, second in a series from the last album. It's like a concept album. I can't pronounce it, but you've obviously read it down there. This is a three-piece, black metal, very atmospheric, very eerie, and there's lots of emotions that comes into this music. It's very, very deep. So the band looks like that. As you expect from any black metal band nowadays, they kind of have that kind of mystical feel to them. I got this for four pounds, eBay sealed, four fucking pounds, with a one pound fifty postage. Who wouldn't buy that, you know? And luckily, this is really, really good. Like, I'd, again, never listened to a note of it. Just bought it on the whim because I thought, oh, I wanted that anyway, or to check out at least. And you know, 
it's beer money, you know. I like beer. I like music. If I can get it for the same price, happy days. And this is very melodic, very atmospheric. The vocal style is very shrieked black metal, which I don't always like. But because the way the riffs are constructed around the voice, the vocals aren't the forefront. They're kind of in the background, like here. And the guitars and the drums and all that are in for, right at the front. And there's some female vocals, what I think are female vocals, that you can hear in some of the songs that give it a whole different vibe. Kind of like a Middle Eastern feel. And But the, the screeches are in the, like, da, you know, like um, Danny Filth kind of range, the very high stuff. And I can take it or leave it with that, you know. And as I'm getting older, I appreciate it more. But, you know, for a digipack for, what, four quid? You know, a fantastic bargain. And it doesn't come with a book. It comes with an inlay with the lyrics on it here, as you can see. And then there's like a little poster of a monastery. But it's cool. And it's like I say, if you're into your black metal where it's very atmospheric, it takes you on a journey and it kind of leaves you wanting it. I mean, I listened to this like two times, back to back actually, and I, you know, I really enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. So I need to pick up the one prior to this and all their other albums, they're all really good. So yeah, Ara with what that's called. Now this one's a classic and I'm glad I picked it up because I haven't listened to this band in years. One of my favorite Irish bands, and that is Morning of Blo Beloved with their debut, Dust. This came out a while ago, so this uh, the band formed in 1992 and this came out in 2001 and this is their debut. This is a reissue though, the artwork looks totally different to the original. Well, this is a reissue done through Growl Records, I think they've done a few of theirs now. I feel like my head's being cut out, let's move that up a bit. And then the tripod falls down, you piece of shit. So yeah, put up with that, I mean, do apologise. But anyway, Morning Beloved are a doom death band from Ireland been going for years and years and years and they are brilliant so they have the kind of death metal vocals but they also have another guy on guitars who sings really really well almost you could put him in um uh what's that band with the song hammer of the north that band it'll come to me in a minute can't think off the top of my head but he has that kind of very celtic very strong singing voice and some of the songs he sings completely and then they throw the growls underneath that fucking amazing the songs are long it's a doom album so they're going to be long but they're so heavy and really melodic, really epic, very drawn out. You know, and it's just great. Absolutely love it. Hammer of the... No, it's not. It is called Hammer of the North. I don't know what the band's called. It's going to piss me off all day now until I stop this video and Google it. But he sounds like that guy on the vocalist for that band. You'll know who I'm talking about. But yeah, this is great. I mean, it was produced by Mags, I think, in Leeds. He's done all the My Dying Brides and all that kind of thing. And it's just heavy, just a really heavy album. You know, these guys know how to do Doom. And I've got this one after this one. I think there's only five albums and I've got two of them. So a few more to buy, but Dust is my favourite by theirs by a country mile. Best riffs, it's heavy. I mean, Autonormal Fires, uh, The Mountains Are Mine. I mean, this whole album is great, but those two songs, I'll leave a link below for one of them. Well worth your time. Very, very good Doom band. Alright, another 2022 release. I'm spoiling you today. This is a Russian black metal band done by two twin brothers who wear these kind of tree folk like costumes with a mask. It's, it's like a tree trunk with a face. And they build, produce this amazing black metal. And I really, really like them. And they put out an album, I think it was last year actually. And I couldn't get a hold of it at all. It's been reissued and I will buy it. But this is the one for this year, and that is the band Grimmer with Frostbitten. This was put out through, I want to say Natchet Productions, but I can't pronounce it. But this is fantastic. These guys are out of Siberia, I think, these guys are based. And it's just amazing, amazing black metal. You can kind of see what they put like there. They have done a tour recently. Um, and they're just really, really cool. I mean, look, it's very, very like emperor-esque kind of black metal, but more in the folky, pagan-esque way where it kind of is all about nature. It gives you that vibe. If you're walking through the mountains or through a snowy kind of landscape, this album, you know, fits it perfectly. There's a better picture of them there. But, you know, they churn out a lot of music. Like I say, they're, they're 
on their four, this is their fourth album now as well. Like they, they, they don't piss about, and they formed in 2014. And can't put that book away because yeah. it goes in there. But I love the artwork, and I will pick up their previous one because. Well, I'll try and pick them up more, really, because they're all really good. It's a problem when you collect music. You, once you get one of the newer ones, you have to backtrack, and it's a nightmare. But, yeah, like I say, well worth your time. If you're an atmospheric black metal fan and you want something to kind of just sit down with and listen to, try this one. There's some gorgeous instrumentals on here. Really, really good music. You know, music musicianship-wise, it's 10 out of 10. And it's just an outstanding album, so well worth your time. Now, some HN2 driven nasty death metal from France. This is a band that formed in 2017. This is their second full length from 2020. And that is the band Iron Flesh with their album Summoning the Putrid. Now, FDA Records, I believe, or one of the German labels put out the vinyl version of it, but the record label that I got the CD from was called Great Dane Records, which I've never heard of before. I have no idea where they're based. Um, but this is a fantastic album. This came out, like I say, in 2020. And it's been on my want list for ages and ages and ages. I got a sticker with this album artwork ages ago. And I checked it out and I loved it. It's very much dismember-like to start with when you listen to it. Because obviously HM2, melodic kind of death metal riffing. Vocals are very much like in Dismember style, but then they make it really, really doomy, and it comes out of nowhere. And some of the songs, like track three, I think it's one of them, just heavy, slow, chuggy HM2 riffs, and they put these horrible melodic doomy leads on it that just take me away. And I fucking love that. If a band can do that for me, I'm all in with a really eerie kind of lead work that carries the riffs. And this is a really good album. It bounces, it goes from slow to fast, slow to fast quite a lot. I really like that. Keeps it, you know, memorable, keeps it entertaining. It's well worth picking up. It's not expensive either. I think I got this off eBay, but you can get it, you know, anywhere really. But it's really heavy. So if you like your HM2 death metal, but you also like Doom and eerie vocals and eerie lead work, all that kind of thing, go grab it because it's well worth your time. Really, really good album. I also managed to found, find a classic that I love this band and I'm wearing one of the t-shirts now and I've had the second album because they only ever did two full lengths and I got the second album the day it came out I pre-ordered it years ago so Tom D. Warrior is one of my inspirations for playing guitar when I write Doom riffs I always think how would he do it keep it simple don't overthink it because with death metal you, when you, especially when you listen to as much music as I do you try and think you're in a death metal band when you, you can't really play like that and I have to try and simplify my music and I think of him and how he would do it because he can write a riff for days and it'll be the most basic riff ever but it works and this album is full of them this is to me his best work he's ever done and that is Triptychon's debut uh, Esperistra Demones this was put out through his own record label as well as Century Media Records so uh, uh, was it Prowling Death Records is the label which is on that t-shirt but he licensed it to Century Media to distribute it for him. So he actually owns the rights to all this music, which is really clever, because a big label like that could go, whoop, take it all away from you. And I managed to find this Digibook version for less than seven quid on eBay, and I was amazed, and I was absolutely amazed, because I've looked for this for ages, and it goes for silly money sometimes. And I thought, I'll buy the vinyl, and then that went up in loads of price, so it's now sold out everywhere. But, you know, Triptychon, when I first heard Triptychon, way when this came out, 2010, yeah, 2010, I was hooked because it's doomy, it's heavy, Tom G vocals are brutal, they're, they're just angry, and I think at the time I, I discovered Celtic Frost through the Monophist album, and I really, really liked it, it really clicked with me, and that's how I discovered H.R. Geiger was through Tom G Warrior and Celtic Frost. And then they put this album out with that artwork and I was fucking sold, I was all in. You know, I wanted this on a t-shirt, oh, I saw these guys live back in 2014 and they were absolutely amazing. And I was sunburnt to a crisp when I watched them and I passed out through a sunstroke after their set <laughs> and it was amazing. You know? 
And look at that artwork there, it's just incredible. And it's such a good album. This is a 10 out of 10 album for me. I forgot how good this album is because I loved it and I hadn't listened to it for years. I've got the second one, like I said, and I've listened to that one recently. And that kind of spurred me on to try and find this again. And it just happened to be one of those lucky days where I found it. No one bid on it, just me. And now I have it and I'm over the moon because it is like his best work. Like some people will quote certain Celtic Frost albums like To the Mega Fairy On. There's loads, but for me, his best work out of all his catalogue is this, hands down. So, Tom Z Warrior, you're a fucking legend. And lastly, we'll end with some kind of doomy black metal from the UK. This is a, well, it was a one man project and is now a full band. And this is a 2022 reissue of his two EPs, but he's remastered them for them on one disc. I'll try and pronounce it. Archif Rufrent. <laughs> I really butchered that. It's down below, but the EPs are called Kingdom and Birds of Joy and Sorrow. I can't talk now. So this was all done by a chap called Lewis Borthwick. And there he is in the back, looking all mysterious and evil. You can make that out. And he's reissued this on CD and cassette. And you can get it through his band camp below. But I wanted this because I picked up a split a couple of well, I say a couple of months ago now of his band and another band. And I really liked one of the songs he did. I can never remember what it's called though. I know it, I can hum it in my head. But he told me how oh, I've remastered that and I'm putting it out again soon. He's like, cool, let me know. And he did. And he um, gave me a discount code as well, which was very, very appreciated. And obviously, I could not buy it then, could I? But um, it's a London based band, formed in 2020. Um, he's got a full band behind, behind him now, and you know, as they put new music out going forward, it won't be just him, I think, involved. But very good. Very, very doomy black metal. So if you like your doom and your black metal, go and give that a spin and let me know what you think. So that is it for this collection update. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you've watched it to the end. I will obviously leave content all around me to check out and obviously like the video to let YouTube know I'm alright and uh, it's not too bad to watch my videos because for some reason they focus more on the like now than anything else. And yeah, just thank you to everyone who watches my videos. I feel like I do this now just to kind of promote new music and that's the whole way I want it to be. I don't want it to be all about me and all that kind of crap. I want it to be about the bands. And I've got, like I say, a couple of videos coming up. I'm going to try something different where I don't show physical release. So I'm going to show uh, like screenshots and kind of go down this whole band camp route. Because I really wanted to do that for ages, but I couldn't be asked with the editing. But I have like, a very basic formula to do it now. So I'm going to give it a go. And obviously you guys can let me know if it's shit or not. So till then, please take care. I'll speak to you guys soon in the comment section. Cheers.